doing some good stuff on the bottom. I'm gonna light us up right now. We got about a almost 80 degrees. It's bumped between 78 and almost 80 degrees. That is warm. Yeah, that is pretty warm. Didn't take it long to warm up this year, did it? No, it sure didn't. Got these little boomerangs starting to show up. That's kind of what those kingfish look like. The reason when they come through underneath the sonar, they're moving usually so fast that they cre it creates what we call a boomerang look. Ooh, this one just got bumped here. Did it? There it is, right there. Fish on, baby. Fish on right now. Got a kingfish. He oh, whacked this one ready? first. Yeah, he did. He came by that one and missed Man, that. Man, I want him on a new rod. Yeah, he oh, knew what we had. One, eh? Seems like a decent one. Well, welcome to this episode of Addicted Fishing. We're off the nation's oldest city right now, right off of St. Augustine. We got Captain Jason Keating on the boat. He's already hooked up with a kingfish. We just dropped in. We're going to do kings out here. Then we're going to go inshore and see if we can whack a slam inside. So we'll see what happens. Such a tidal-based fishery, you got to kind of do different things during the day. As you'll see throughout the show, we'll do several different things today. And uh, the cool thing is it's all close enough where you can do a little bit of it all. Now, what about this reef we're on here? You said that the school, it's a school project reef they did out here? What they did was several years ago, the uh, government did some grants and they did some uh, outdoor education and some uh, awareness programs with some of the local high schools. And uh, this is actually the St. Augustine High School reef that we're on. It's a reef project and uh, the biology class actually comes out and maintains and takes samples. And it's been a really neat thing for them. So it gets, to the, uh, gets the kids fishing. It does. It's awesome. That's great. Oh, Guess what oh, we got, it's guys? A big brown one, baby. <laughs> Looky here. Told you there might be a few out here. With these light rods, Blair, man, this is an awesome piece right here, buddy. Love this action. Really put some wood on him, but you don't really feel that you're going to break the fish off of these tips. Looks like our big kingfish just turned into a big brown fish. Yeah. That's never a bad thing. No, they eat a little better. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they eat a lot better. Plus, they're really fun to catch. They give it to you till just the bitter end, don't they? Most of the time, I always say a cubby will pull you as hard as you pull them. Absolutely. One of the biggest mistakes I ever made was trying to free gap one that ended up about 45 pounds. And uh, I was breathing gingerly for about four or five days after that when he slammed me into the gunnel. Oh, yeah, I think we got to take her for supper. Not a bad one. No. It's actually one of the best kind right there, good eater. I got the net for him. Oh, look at that beautiful brown fish. Look at him. All right, Blair, I'm gonna get his head up if I can. Nah, he uh, didn't like the camera, did he? Well, he either got to look at uh, me or you. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get you out from under the boat. But uh, it's quite often that you'll see cobia in the in the spread, and very often, that, more often than not, they actually have some friends with them when they come up off the bottom because they're such a social fish, it seems like. Spitting up crabs, look at him. You know, I'm a firm believer that that phenomenon right there is why you lose a lot of these fish, especially gut hook. Yeah. They'll actually turn their stomachs almost inside out. Blair, this is probably one of the finest rods I've ever put pressure on a fish with, buddy. It feels good, don't it? God, I just, it, you, you can't, he can't really do much. If it wasn't for the line, I'd have him in already. Ain't nothing wrong with that fins, brother. No, 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 <laughs> just the light tackle. The light tackle, no. If it was any other line, I think we'd have lost this fish by now. You're not gonna find any knots in that line. There's no splices. It's the smoothest, pretty yeah. much the smoothest braid out on the market today. It no is. Knots, no little splices back in the line. And this is the wind tamer. Got a little breeze out here today. You're not gonna get wind knots. They don't like sunshine, do they? Mm-hmm. Come here, buddy. Not unless they're wanting to bask in the sun. Yeah, unless they're on the back of a big old ray. He don't like the looks of that net, does he? No, because he knows that Frable gets him, he's going in it. <laughs> they don't really drop. Yeah, I normally put the hook in them, but uh, thanks to my cousin Shane, I don't have a hook anymore. Oh, Blair, yeah. I think I got him enough where you can get him in the frame. Little slack. Nice cob, brother. There's your cubia. Here we go. You think you got some place around here that could cook that one up? I think we got a restaurant that might we send you to tonight. That sounds like a winner to me. Awesome. Let's get this guy out of the net. Wow, that's a fine rod right there, boy. Jason, you want to grab them pliers back there, please? Yeah, coming on with you right here, boss. Thank you, sir. There you are. He got a mouthful, didn't he? Yeah, he did a mouthful of kingfish rig. 
That one right there, I think. You think we can invite that one home for dinner? Yeah, I think we can have him up for sure. About 34, 35 inches. Perfect eater size, though. They're not gamey. That's one of the best eating fish in the ocean. Cut all the red out. These guys are insane. Tell you what, y'all ever want to do this, it, we ne you never know what you're going to get off the oldest city in the nation, right? Yeah, it's uh, the nation's oldest city. We got, a, we got a great variety of fish on all our nearshore stuff. And uh, you guys stay tuned. We're going to go do some inshore stuff later on. Well, let him close out. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Jason Key and more addicted fishing from the oldest city in the nation. See ya. Let's go then. That's definitely a red. There's one. About time. The old coho salmon kale, huh? Yep. Here we go. Well, there we go. <laughs> well, welcome back. We got a new situation that kind of kicked up a little bit offshore on us, so we moved back up here in the, what is the name of this river? This is the Talamanto River in St. Augustine. The Talamanto River? Talamanto River. The Talamanto River in St. Augustine. And I just caught me a black drum, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't quite as big as my famous black drum, but he'll grow up and be a mugging one day. But what we've done, like I said, it, it absolutely started blowing pretty good offshore. You can see the smoke and everything going by us here. The wind's kind of howling. So what we've done, we've come back up in the creeks now. We're fishing around the oyster bars. We're looking for redfish, flounder, black drum, just about anything that can bite and have a you know good tug on the rod. Um, So you'll fish it until the oyster bars get covered and then it runs further south. Yup. That's definitely a red. Here's one. About time. Sounds like a good one. Sounds like a good one. More fly? Yeah, those your flies will get you out. <laughs> Talk to me, old Mr. Redfish. Is he gonna be a redfish or a really good black drum? both of which kind of frequent this bar pretty constantly. Oh yeah? Yeah. A good old black drum, baby. Yes, sir. Wow, that's gonna be a good fish. Let's see if we do a double, I think I got a You got one there. on? Nope, I got me a rock. Piece fish. of my favorite steak. This might be one with some grown shoulders on him. Yeah, you never can. Oh, that's got to be a black drum. Ooh, I almost saw some pink. I saw some pink. Did you know them black drum fool you every Ooh, time. Ooh, that's a that's curry a nice one right there. That's a good one there. Yeah, he's probably 30 inches, 28 or 30 anyway. That's a new rod feel. This rod is such got such a great balance. It's got a really good backbone, but it's got such the ultralight play on the tip. It's just awesome. I mean, it's just really whipped this fish here. We'll, we'll tell everybody about them rods here at the bait check. Absolutely. It's a fine piece of equipment. You got him, Mr. Wiggins? Yes, sir. Perfect. Nice. Got that laser sharp sticking right out of his head where it should be. Believe it or not, these are salmon. Well, it sure did the trick on that redfish. Laser Sharp has so many different styles of hooks. I just went through their catalog one day and just started looking at hooks. I said, you know, that one would work good for redfish. That one would work good for this. And sure enough, just because it's got salmon written on it, that don't mean it's not gonna catch a redfish or a snook or a tarpon or a trout. Adios, fish. Nice release. Good job. Let's see if we can't do that again. I gotta get that blue rod bent, brother. Let's get it. get that blue one bent. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more addictive fishing. Let's go then. There you go, fish. Nice, Blair. All right. A little flounder action. Come on, Flatty. Looks like a pretty cool creek right up this way. 
sure is. You know, these, these flounder, just like with the outgoing water blare, they kind of frame themselves around these creek mouths and just wait to ambush bait as they move. Just like they move out, they move back in. Anywhere there's a transition. There's a little flounder just popped out of the water. It looked like a little one. Huh, sure did. There, there you is. go, fish. Nice, Blair. All right. A little flounder action. That was funny. That looks like the same one we just saw jump out. Yeah? It looks like him. Very nice. The targeted species. Ooh, that's a good one right there, Bubba. There we go. Nice work. That's a flatty. Oh, all right. That's saw a, what he just got. The targeted species. Oh, that's okay. what he just bit. Check that out. Look at those teeth on these guys. See what he's eating. Hold his mouth open. Let me get him. A little croaker. Little croaker. A little bitty croaker. Spit that up. If you look at those guys' teeth right there, they're just full of toothy critters. Check those babies out. They sure do a number on you, and if you notice, they're actually turned inward, so when we do that bite, you feel that thump. That's how they'll actually hold on to their food and then bury back down into the mud. And they just sit there and chomp it and chomp it and chomp it until they finally eat it. You see how big their mouth are? That's why they're real hard to hook. They got just a big mouth. We use a small hook. A lot of times you can pull it right out. That's why we use a kale style hook, uh, you know, right along with a jig head so you can hammer them right off the bat. But a kale style hook works real good when you're using live bait for these guys. Nice fish. Very nice fish. What do you think? Mama wants some filet? That's what I was going to doubt that, but that's <laughs> what we were asking whether we think or not. Think well, you want to put him in the box? Yeah, Mama wants some filets. Absolutely. That's one of the best eaten fish in the ocean. Oh, yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've eaten slider where you take and you, you debone them and you pull the backbone out of them and you turn them inside out and stuff them with uh, stuffing. Incredible. I have to get a couple more because I think my mom will want one of them. Jason, we were talking last night at dinner that I found pretty interesting. You said that your grandfather was the mayor here? Yep, he was the mayor for 18 years. Uh, he was the president of the Historical Society, which uh, directly related with our sister city, the island of Majorca. My family actually traces back to the first settlers who actually settled New Smyrna Beach back in the day, and a uh, hurricane kind of forced us up to St. Augustine. Is that, is that when the family built the... Uh built the fort? Absolutely. What they did was, uh, long story short, we heard of this Menendez fella build, building a boat and coming to a new place, and we kind of built boats and followed him. When we landed in New Smyrna, we ended up as slaves. A hurricane came up and basically washed the whole settlement out before they actually got it a permanent settlement. And uh, we walked north, ended up in St. Augustine, where the weather pretty much broke, the water <laughs> resided, and uh, we started building places, and that's how we ended up here. We've been here ever since. That's a cool deal, so it don't get much more Florida than, uh, well, than me and you both. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you got a couple crackers on the boat for sure. Oh. There he is right there. I got fish, fish on, fish on, boy. <laughs> hey, man. That was a set like old Roland Martin would do. Yeah, I'd have made Roland pretty proud. I'd look at that, I stowed his lips together. You I got him You so should have good. gave it a, oh, son. Whoo, son. <laughs> well, target species, but he's a half a fish now. I miss seeing old Roland on that redfish trail. He was fun to hang with. He was, he was a blast. Everybody gave that old fellow a bad rap, but he was one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Yeah, he is. Definitely. That's what they look like when they're and babies. Well, we were talking earlier when, when the cameras weren't rolling, we were talking about a left-handed flounder and a right-handed flounder. Now, I don't have any idea what makes the difference between a left-handed and a right-handed. I know that their faces will be on the one side or the other, but I don't know what makes them tilt to one side or the other when they're babies. Because when they're little finger, or finger flounder, they're all, they're just about this big. Yep, and they're and they, actually... They swim upright and that eye migrates over. Weird fish. It and, does. Wonder how many years of evolution is on that fish right there. At least two. Yeah. <laughs> Call you man. Three, two, one. See ya. Little bitty flatty. I didn't mean to sit in that hard. <laughs> Stay till we we'll be right back with Jason Keating and more addictive fishing from the oldest city in the nation. Let's go then. There we go. There he is. Little flounder. Him in? Well, I didn't quite put him in the boat like you did. 
On today's Rig It Right segment, I'm going to show you what Jason and I were out there throwing. Uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about the fishery in St. Augustine. A bunch of different variety of fish up there to catch. You have offshore, you have inshore, you have big tides, you have oyster beds, a ton of different places to fish up there. And one thing that will definitely help you out is if you have one of these hummingbirds, because it shows wrecks, it shows oyster beds, it shows sandbars. Get one of the Navionics chips that go in there, and you can do just what we did. We went straight out to where the wreck was actually marked on the Navionics chip. And we were using these rigs out here. This is, it happens to be a wide gap soft plastic hook. And you can find them right here at Dick's. They're made by Laser Sharp. I was looking through their catalog the other day, and I was looking for a kale hook, and I saw these. And I was like, you know, those would probably work. So tried them out, and sure enough, they were working all day today. Using 30 pound test Seaguar Premium Fluorocarbon Leader. Once again, if it brings that extra bite during the day, it's done its job. And plus the abrasion resistance with Cobia. They have a real sandpaper mouth and flounder. They have real sharp teeth. And you just want to protect your line. Keep that fish on the line. Using a knocker rig. All a knocker rig is is just basically a weight tied in front of the hook. Very, very simple rig. 15 pound test fins. And this happens to be the wind tamer because it was kind of windy out there today. That's why we had to come in. 2500 size reel and the uh, new signature series rod and we'll talk about this a little bit later in the season. If you ever get down to St. Augustine, up to St. Augustine and book Jason, you'll catch a variety of fish. But remember one thing, every fishing season starts right here at this. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. Or do you normally head up this creek? Yeah, we usually fish right up here to the first bend, pinning on the tide. The tide's up kind of high right now, so aside from getting back in the grass layer, I think we're going to do better out here on this front. Are you going to go ahead and spin it around? and? Yeah, that way we can fish properly and have the tide come back. I think it's turned a little too much to kind of yeah, fish with it's, it. It's hard to keep it going down that way. Yeah, once it gets moving. Well, shoot, Jason, if I'd have known that, I'd have plugged in my course on my uh, iPilot here, because all I got to do is punch A, you follow your whole course, press B, and then you press follow, and we could have followed this track all the way back out to the mouth. All the way we came in, huh? The whole way I could have been fishing. That's amazing. Could have been fishing hands-free. It was so neat watching you all day, you know, every time you'd be getting a piece of bait or move somewhere off the deck to actually accomplish something else, it was moving around and doing its own thing. and. Pretty amazing piece of equipment, Blair. A little pinch off, sorry about that. That's okay. I can switch sides, brother. Like God gave me tails, he gave me feet. <laughs> there we go. There he is. This little flounder. You gonna skate him in? Well, I didn't quite put him in the boat like you did. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it's another flatty. Yes, it is. Come on. Decent eater, too. And you think that one's a keeper too? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, well. Push grits. So your mama got one, and my mama got one. Nice one. He's gotta be 12 inches, right? Yep. My foot's 12 inches. He's bigger than 12 inches. He'll push grits, won't he? Push grits. Toss him in a cooler. Awesome. Reach it up. Boom. Well, now he's a soft shell flounder. That's a classic. <laughs> Jason, I tell you what, if y'all want to come do this, it's, it's been a little bit slow. We got high pressure sitting on us and the wind's howling, but Jason can find the fish up here in St. Augustine if y'all ever want to come and do this. So I guess until next week, I appreciate it, Jason. Thank you much, Blair. We had a blast. Don't forget about the website, addictivefishing.com. What's your website? Redlinefishingcharters.com. Look him up and book a trip right here in St. Augustine, the nation's oldest city. We'll see you next week. Take care. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to AddictiveFishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. You can get up here and catch just a variety of species, but remember, bluefish, redfish, brownfish. That looks like a good one. I think it's the, it's the stick. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!